The initial step in drilling a well is known as spudding in. This involves driving 300 to 400 feet of 36 inch diameter metal tubing called casing into the ground. This casing forms the backbone of the well and provides the necessary support for the subsequent phases of our drilling plan. The 36 inch casing is lowered to the seafloor using drill pipe. Each section of drill pipe is 30 to 45 feet long and about 6 inches in diameter. The drill pipe sections are connected end to end, gradually lowered into the well and raised back to the surface as needed. To expedite the process of connecting multiple sections of drill pipe whenever a drill bit, casing or another piece of equipment needs to be lowered into the well, the drill pipe is stored in the derrick in groups of three or four sections known as a stand. Typically, pumping seawater through the end of the casing using the ship's powerful pumps provides enough force for the pipe to settle. If this method is insufficient, some rigs employ giant hammers to drive the casing to the desired depth. Once the casing is in place, the drill pipe is unlatched and returned to the surface, allowing us to proceed to the next step of our drilling program. The subsequent step involves lowering a drill bit inside the 36 inch casing. We then drill a hole large enough to accommodate a 22 inch casing, 2,000 to 3,000 feet into the ground. The drill bit is attached to the drill pipe, which extends back to the drill ship at the surface. As the bit rotates in the well bore, high pressure drilling fluids, known as mud, are pumped down the centre of the drill pipe and out through nozzles in the drill bit. These drilling fluids remove debris from the foot of the well, lubricate and cool the drill bit and help maintain well integrity. Once the target depth is reached, the drill string is removed and the 22-inch casing is lowered into the hole and positioned with the help of remotely operated vehicles, ROVs. With both sections of casing in place, the well is secured by pumping cement down the drill pipe and out through a special nozzle at the end. The cement fills the space between the casing and the drilled hole creating a solid barrier to protect the well and prevent it from collapsing during the next drilling phase. Underground formations are under immense pressure. To control the well and prevent pressure from escaping, a large underwater control valve, called a blowout preventer BOP, is installed on top of the wellhead. The BOP is firmly connected to the drilling vessel via a marine riser. Drill pipe can be lowered through the marine riser, the BOP, the wellhead and into the well to drill deeper. Subsequent sections of the well are drilled similarly to the earlier casing step. Drill crews continue drilling deeper into the ground to allow the next section of casing to be run and cemented in place. Each drill string becomes progressively narrower, eventually reaching as little as 8 inches. Originally, wells were drilled vertically, but modern technology allows us to steer the drill bit in any direction. Most contemporary wells begin vertically and then curve to horizontal for a lateral well. Once geologists are satisfied with the well's location, a series of tests called logs are conducted to determine the quality of oil and gas in the formation. High-tech measurement devices are sent into the hole to detect various formation features. This process is called logging because the information is recorded, logged, into a database as it is collected. 
we then move to the completion phase, where the well is prepared for oil or gas production. In a cased hole completion, small perforations are made in the casing within the production zone, allowing oil to flow from the surrounding rock into the production tubing. With the well drilled, secured and ready for production, our drill ship can set sail to the next site, ready to start the process all over again.